Criminal law. Non-fatal offenses against the person. Section 20. Wounding and GBH. The offenses of wounding and grievous bodily harm, GBH, are found under two separate sections of the Offenses Against the Person Act 1861. Wounding or GBH under Section 20 represents the lesser offense which carries a maximum penalty of five years imprisonment and is a triable either way offense. Section 18 Wounding or GBH is a more serious indictable offense and carries a maximum sentence of life. This video will focus on the offense under Section 20. Please see separate video for Section 18. Section 20 of the Offenses Against the Person Act 1861 provides, Whosoever shall unlawfully and maliciously wound or inflict any grievous bodily harm on any other person, either with or without a weapon or instrument, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. The actus reus of an offense under Section 20 consists of, 1. Unlawfully. 2. Wound or inflict GBH. 3. On another person. 1. Unlawfully. Wounding or GBH may be classed as lawful in some circumstances. This covers those who are acting in self-defense or prevention of crime and in limited circumstances where the victim has consented. For example, surgical interference and where the injury results from properly conducted games and sports. For a more detailed review of the circumstances in which consent may operate, see the separate video on consent in criminal law. The Defense of Reasonable Punishment of a Child under Section 58 of the Children Act 2004 is not available to the offenses of wounding or GBH. 2. Wound or inflict GBH. Note there are two separate offenses created under Section 20. Firstly, the offense of wounding and secondly, the offense of GBH. The defendant does not need to commit both to incur liability. One is sufficient. Wounding. According to Moriarty v. Brooks, 1834, a wound exists where there is a break in the continuity of the skin. Lord Lyndhurst set the definition of a wound as an injury to the person by which the skin is broken. If the skin is broken and there was bleeding, that is a wound. The case of McLaughlin, 1836, established that a scratch or graze which does not pierce all seven layers of the skin does not constitute a wound. An internal rupture of blood vessels will not amount to a wound. In JCC, a minor, v. Eisenhower, the victim had been hit by a pellet from an air gun causing bruising. This did not amount to a wound but simply ABH. A wound therefore obviously includes stab wounds and gunshot wounds. Minor cuts will also suffice. Provided it has been established that there has been a break in the continuity of the skin, it will amount to a wound. There is no threshold of severity. A pinprick will suffice. Grievous bodily harm means really serious harm. In DPP v. Smith, 1961, the Lord Chancellor, Viscount Colmure, stated, whether one is considering the crime of murder or the statutory offense. Bodily harm needs no explanation, and grievous means no more and no less than really serious. In R. V. Saunders it was held that where it is obvious that really serious harm was intended, a direction which omits the word, really, is not a misdirection. According to R. V. Ashman, 1858, it is not necessary that the harm should be either permanent or dangerous. In assessing whether the particular harm was grievous, account has to be taken of the effect on and the circumstances of the particular victim. This position was stated in R. V. Bollum, 2004 where it was held that bruises and abrasions were capable of being GBH on a 17-month-old child, when they would not normally be considered really serious harm if inflicted on an adult. It is for the jury to decide whether a particular injury constitutes really serious harm. In R. V. Brown and Stratton, 1997, Lord Justice Potter held that the question of what amounts to really serious harm is to be objectively assessed. It is clear from R. V. Burstow, 1997, that GBH includes psychiatric injury. The use of the word inflict in section 20 has given rise to some difficulty. Originally, the courts interpreted inflict to mean that there must be proof of an assault or battery. See for example R. V. Clarence, 1889, where the defendant was not liable for infecting his wife with an STI as she had consented to sexual intercourse. 
This meant there was no unlawful application of force. More recently inflict was interpreted to mean the direct or indirect application of force, R.V. Wilson. In the context of psychiatric injury, the case of R.V. Burstow found the word inflict simply means cause. There is no requirement of assault or battery or direct or indirect application of force. 3. On another person. This requirement differs from the Section 18 offense which can be committed on oneself. The mens rea of wounding or GBH under Section 20. The defendant must have the intention or be reckless as to the causing of some harm. There is no need for the prosecution to establish that they intended or was reckless as to causing really serious harm. This was set out in R.V. Savage, 1991, where the defendant argued she only intended to throw beer over her husband's ex-girlfriend. The glass accidentally slipped out of her hand. She was liable under Section 20 as she intended to cause some harm. The conjoined case of R.V. Parmenter, 1991, established that subjective recklessness applies to all non-fatal offenses. This means the defendant must foresee the risk of causing some harm. In R.V. Parmenter, the defendant's conviction was quashed because he was unaware that holding a baby in the way that he had could cause harm. In summary, an offense under Section 20 is triable either way with a maximum sentence of five years. GBH is where the defendant unlawfully caused really serious harm to another and wounding is where blood is present. The two offenses are distinct. Blood is not a requirement of GBH and serious harm is not necessary for wounding. For both wounding and GBH, the defendant must intend or foresee the risk of some harm. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.elawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at elawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.elawrevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.